Welcome back to another episode of Rock Boys Football. And when you're hot, you are hot on the recruiting trail. And the USC Trojans and Lincoln Riley are certainly getting some traction in this 2024 class. And it was really funny. Like the narrative 24 hours ago was Lincoln Riley probably spending too much time in the transfer portal, not getting high school talent that he can develop and, and kind of build this program out with. In less than 24 hours, he lands three commitments, two of those which are top 100 recruits according to the 24-7 sports composite in Cameron Fountain and Dakota Fields. We're going to talk a little bit about what Lincoln Riley's doing in this 2024 class, dig a little deeper into what are these players and what are they going to bring to this USC program. Now, before we do again, always just want to say thank you to you guys. And at this point, really, especially the USC fans, we've talked a lot of USC football in terms of potential national championship contenders, transfer portal action, and now they're getting active in the high school recruiting trail. So if you guys do enjoy the content, you're a USC fan, consider subscribing to the channel. Again, we can't thank you guys enough for all the support that you guys have shown, like the community that we've been able to build with just college football fans in general that that love the transfer portal, that love talking recruiting. It's truly been a blessing. I can't thank you guys enough. So again, if you do enjoy the content, you like the updates, consider subscribing to the channel. And USC fans, we are going to take a look at what this class could be after we talk a little bit about these players. And it's, it's really exciting in terms of the talent that Lincoln Riley might be bringing in in this 2024 class. Now, Let's get into Dakota Fields first. He he uh, committed around midday morning time for, for y'all out in the West Coast. A lot to like about this kid. And the, the two things that kind of jump out from you is, one, this is a really important recruiting battle that you need to be able to win if you're USC, right? This is a top 100 cornerback that had offers from all the elite Pac-12 teams and also a lot of the Big 12 teams. Again, as a US, USC is going to be competing against programs like Oregon for a lot of these top end talent on the West coast. And you also see teams like Alabama also getting in the mix for a guy like Dakota fields and uh, Lincoln Riley will be able to get quarterbacks. He's going to be able to get wide receivers. And I think a lot of the, maybe the question marks is can he recruit the rest of the positions, especially as you move to the big 10 and maybe you need to be a little bit more physical. I think Lincoln Riley's answering a lot of these questions and you want to go beat a team like Ohio state consistently in the big 10. You have to have, rangy fast cornerbacks that can match up with the elite wide receivers you'll be seeing and to get into what Dakota Fields brings that's exactly what he brings that you see like length and size length size and speed is really king at this cornerback position if you are not faster than the wide receiver you're trying to cover if you do not have the size to match up with the guys like Marvin Harrison Jr. who are big and fast it's it's going to be tough sledding at the college football level and in the NFL level you look at the NFL draft and you look at the 24-7 sports rankings. These cornerbacks, are the, the cornerbacks that you're seeing at the at the top of the list are the guys who are six plus that can that have track speed. And Dakota Fields checks both those boxes, right? Six two. You watch his film. He has some really good length. He's also a track athlete that does high jump, long jump. So he's a guy that you have the size, you also have the speed. It's it's really a, it's, it's a reason why he's a top 100 uh, prospect, according to 24-7 Sports. And you're seeing Lincoln Riley and a lot of USC fans were talking about, hey, when is Lincoln Riley really going to get it going on the recruiting trail? We, we brought in a three-star offensive tackle who is outside the top 1,000 nationally from Colorado yesterday. Some of the USC fans were kind of concerned about the three stars coming in. Well, guess what? USC is starting to bring in some of that elite top tier talent. And that's not to kind of mitigate a guy like Hayden Treater, who is, I think, a good depth piece in this class. But if you do want to consistently compete for national titles, you have to have that blue chip ratio. You have to be bringing in these top 100 guys. And Dakota Fields, out of the state of California, certainly checks that box. And moving over to Cameron Fountain, another top 100 prospect, the number seven edge player in the whole entire country, also committed to USC. And this, I'm not saying Dakota Fields is not a good guy. He's a phenomenal guy. But Cameron Fountain is something that I think really USC wants that type of talent to get in there from the high school level. You saw USC really have to address the trenches in that defensive line in the transfer portal. Again, bringing in guys like Bear Alexander and Anthony Lucas. And USC needed to do that. But Cameron Fountain's a guy that has all the potential. And again, there's a reason why he's a top 100 prospect. He has phenomenal length, 6'5", 
240 pounds. And I think the most impressive thing when you see a guy like Cameron Pound before you even get into what role he might play for USC is you go into the state of Georgia, Atlanta specifically, and go beat out teams like Tennessee, Georgia, Arkansas, South Carolina. I know Alabama was also in on an offer. That says something. Like the, those guys are normally gobbled up by Auburn, Alabama, Georgia. That's SEC territory. USC gets Cameron Fountain on a visit and he commits the next day. That is a phenomenal job by Coach Sean Nua and Lincoln Riley at kind of getting that talent on the defensive line. And especially as you head into the Big Ten, it's important to have those bodies that are going to be competitive on the trenches against teams like Michigan, Penn State, Ohio State. Massive, massive win for USC, landing two top 100 recruits. And I want to talk a little bit about Lincoln Riley and how he's kind of been building this roster out at USC. We talked a little bit about it yesterday. Lincoln Riley got really aggressive in the transfer portal. When he took over this USC program, the cupboards were bare. And you can go at the high school level and try to get some of these guys, but it takes a little bit. You don't want to be relying on too many 18-year-old true freshmen to go out and win you college football games. So what does Lincoln Riley do in this new era of college football is he's able to go to the transfer portal where there is a ton of talent that is proven talent that's played at the college football level and their bodies are developed to help you win games immediately. And Lincoln Riley, uh, it almost seems like it's not true that this is only his second year with the program. And so he's continuing to get those kind of bodies into the program in the transfer portal. But I do think after year two and year three and year four at USC, I think you're going to start seeing Lincoln Riley pivot a little bit away from the transfer portal and focus more on developing these guys out of high school. But as he took over, he needed to kind of get that immediate injection of talent of guys that could produce at the college football level immediately. And again, and USC has put themselves, you look at their depth chart, and we've talked a lot about USC, and we actually have a video that we're, we're, that we're building out of the five reasons why USC can win a national championship in 2023. And I think Lincoln Riley has put this program in a spot where they can certainly do so in his second year with the program. It's it's really been a phenomenal job by Lincoln Riley. And I'm excited to see what how he goes about building this roster and acquiring talent after year three, year four with the program. Because I do start thinking it's going to be a little bit more in the high school ranks as opposed to the transfer portal, which he's been so aggressive with now. Let's take a look at this USC program as a whole in the 2024 class. They went from four commits to seven commits in 24 hours. And their two top guys in the class right now committed in the same day. And you talk about Michigan having all that momentum, Ohio State having all that momentum, Georgia having all that momentum. Right now, there is not a team that has more momentum on the recruiting trail than USC, which that recruiting and the recruiting trail – has a lot to do with momentum. And Lincoln Riley, I wouldn't be surprised if you see a couple more commits in the month of June fall to USC because of this momentum and something kind of special building in this 2024 class. But you got seven commits. You have one of the better wide receivers in the class from the state of California, Xavier Jordan. And then you have some nice little depth pieces that, again, aren't the premier top 100 national recruits, but it's important to get those guys into the program and see if you can develop a guy like Hayden Treater, who, again, 6'6", 300-pound frame at the offensive tackle spot. It might be a work in progress. It might be till year three, year four, till he starts. But it's hard to say he doesn't have the body to be a starter for USC going forward at year three, year four, year five. Now, let's talk about what this class could be and what USC might want to do in terms of building this class. And they have a, a interesting small visit uh, happening this this weekend, excuse me, Friday, June 9th, where they have Peyton Woodard, St. John Bosco kid, committed to Georgia. But he's also coming in, and a lot of you guys were talking about Vili, uh, Viliamu Asa, who's also a St. John Bosco kid, leaning maybe towards USC. I, the St. John Bosco uh, pipeline needs to be strong, and I think those two guys would be nice targets. But where I kind of want to – focus my attention on here is going up to a guy like DeAndre Carter. When you talk about establishing the trenches, getting a guy 6'4", 330 pound kid from modern day, who's going to play on that inside of the offensive line, talking about building the trenches to be physical enough to go in and run the ball and win football games on a team like Michigan, Penn State, Ohio State. DeAndre Carter coming from modern day, 
is a very interesting guy to look at. And you know they're going to get their wide receivers, right? Mike Matthews, Ryan Pelham, two guys that will be on the visit uh, June 16th. I don't. I think Mike Matthews, it sounds like Clemson is probably in the lead there. I know Tennessee and Georgia are also going after him. But like, I trust Lincoln Riley to get the wide receivers. He's going to get the quarterback. I, that's kind of what I want to talk about the most. Elijah Brown, the seventh best quarterback in this 2024 class, uncommitted. I think USC put a lot of their, uh, kind of all their eggs in one basket there, going after Dylan Raiola. And for a while, it seemed like there was some traction there. And I will tell you right now, recruiting has a lot to do with pivoting. You don't get a guy that you spend a lot of time going after. Who can you pivot to and get? Elijah Brown seems like a, a perfect guy right in your backyard at, at modern day. He's won a ton of games at the high school level. He's a top 100 uh, recruit in the country. He's going to be in L.A. for the Elite 11 camp. Stanford and Arizona State seemingly in the lead for Elijah Brown's recruitment. I'll tell you one thing. If Lincoln Riley and the USC Trojans want to turn it up a little bit on Elijah Brown on the recruiting trail, it's really hard to see Lincoln Riley losing that recruiting battle to a team like Stanford and where they're at as a program right now. And so I I don't know if USC will go and take a quarterback in this 2024 class just because you brought in Malachi Nelson in 2023. And it's kind of hard to get a top another top 100, top 50 national ranked dude to commit at the quarterback spot on the heels of someone like Malachi Nelson. So I think USC could kind of go two different ways at that quarterback spot. One, go after Elijah Brown. If you think you have a chance, like you can't, it, you're, it's not a bad thing to bring Elijah Brown into that quarterback room. I could also see USC saying, Hey, we're just going to kind of turn our attention to this 2025 class and go after our number one quarterback on the board in our 2025 class. Interested to see how Lincoln Riley, and now you got Cliff Kingsbury in there too. It seems like a dream scenario for any young quarterback who's an elite kid coming out of high school. USC will be just fine at the, at the quarterback position. I'm just kind of interested to see what Lincoln Riley decides to do at that quarterback spot uh, on the high school recruiting trail. But again, a, a massive, massive, massive couple of, what, 24 hours for USC on the recruiting trail. So wanted to hop on, continue to talk about it. But again, the USC fans... You guys have been absolutely awesome. If you do enjoy the content, consider subscribing to the channel. We appreciate you guys, and we'll talk to y'all later.